हेलो एक्सपीरियंट्स वेलकम टू दी ऑनलाइन प्लेटफॉर्म ऑफ जियो आई एस दिस इज द न्यू सीरीज फॉर द साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी फॉर द यू पी एस सी एक्सपीरियंट्स एंड ऑल अदर एक्सपीरियंट्स हु आर प्रिपेयरिंग फॉर द स्टेट सिविल सर्विस एग्जामिनेशन एंड आवर टूडेज टॉपिक इज द डिफेंस कैपेबिलिटीज ऑफ इंडिया दिस टॉपिक इज पर्टिकुलरली वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर यू पी एस सी प्रोलिम्स एग्जामिनेशन एज वेल एज फॉर द मेन्स एग्जामिनेशन स्पेसिफिकली फॉर द प्रोलिम्स इट हैव रेलिवेंट सिग्निफिकेंस सो वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट द डिफेंस पॉलिसीज एंड डिफेंस कैपेबिलिटीज ऑफ इंडिया एंड वी विल ऑल्सो डिस्कस अबाउट द हिस्टोरिकल आस्पेक्ट ऑफ द हिस्टोरिकल आस्पेक्ट ऑफ द हिस्ट्री ऑफ द डिफेंस इंडस्ट्रीज एंड द डिफेंस कैपेबिलिटीज ऑफ इंडिया सो लेट्स स्टार्ट अवर टूडेज लेक्चर as you can see on the screen that defense capabilities of india you can see that uh, different kind of defense equipments are mentioned here and we will discuss and uh, try to learn about all the things in very detailed manner so those students who who, who did not have the science background uh, can also able to understand all the concept in a very easy manner because we are very much aware that upsc is a generalistic exam they don't ask uh, very much domain specific things so these are very generalistic things and upsc expect uh, uh, the sincere aspirants to know about uh, these things so let's start our today's lecture so uh, first let's understand the defense capabilities what are defense capabilities and we'll try to understand what is the basic uh, policy of the uh, indian government and what is the history of india's defense capability so you can see on the screen that india's defense policy is aimed to enable peace in the subcontinent now here we must understand that uh, we are a very peaceful country india from the very beginning follow the peaceful principles uh, and uh, here you can see that defense policy of india defense policy of india now policy is what nothing but the principles which uh, the country is going to follow in order to enhance its defense capabilities and in order to safeguard its territories so here india's defense policy is aimed at promoting sustainable peace now this is very important you must understand the uh, basic principle on which the indian foreign policy and india's defense policy is relied upon and that policy is to promote the sustainable peace sustainable peace in the subcontinent in the subcontinent means we are talking about the um, we are talking about india pakistan afghanistan bangladesh nepal myanmar this is the subcontinent and we are talking about the sustainable peace in the subcontinent so india's policy india's defense policy is all about promoting the sustainable peace in the subcontinent and equip and equip the nations defense forces adequately to safeguard the territorial integrity of country against the for an aggression now this is a very simple and basic line all the countries want to maintain their territorial integrity they don't want that even a single inch of their territory uh, is you know taken by some other foreign aggressor or the any foreign country or any neighborhood country so all the countries want to want to you know maintain want to safeguard their territory so in order to safeguard their territory all the countries have the defense forces similarly india also have its defense forces which safeguard it from the uh, the external aggression of the foreign countries so india have defense uh, forces and these india have three defense forces in a nutshell we know that india have territorial army india have territorial army on one hand uh, second we have the indian maritime navy and third we have the air force so all these three forces are considered as the defense forces although the coast guard is also there but in a in a very you know precise manner we know that there are three defense forces of india the army the navy and the uh, and the air force these are three defense forces so on the one hand what the defense policy is saying defense policy is saying that we know that aimed at promoting sustainable peace in the subcontinent so on the one hand we are going to promote the peace in the region and we are also equipping our nation's defense forces adequately means we are equipping we are providing all the necessary arms and ammunition to our defense industries adequately to safeguard the territorial integrity of the country to safeguard the territorial integrity means our territory should be uh, should not be taken by the the other foreign aggressors or our neighborhood so we are uh, we are doing two, two things here first is we are uh, you know promoting peace 
but in case if some foreign aggressor is coming and trying to take our territory then we will definitely uh, we will definitely definitely retaliate and in in order to ensure the territorial integrity of india we won't give um, any of the single inch of our territory to the other countries okay so here we understood what is the uh, philosophy of india's uh, defense uh, defense capabilities and india's defense strategy first is the peace and second is the equipping our armed forces equipping our defense forces adequately so that the territorial integrity of india can be maintained so these are the two things which we must consider and which, which we must take into consideration uh, while discussing the defense policy of india now the second point which is very important and very relevant today that is the india remains the largest arms importer in the world india remains the largest arms importer in the world means india's import the value of india's total imports is at the number 1 means india is importing largest numbers of arms and ammunition from rest of the world now this statement is kind of contradictory with the first line which we read just that india's defense policy is aimed at promoting sustainable peace now on the one hand we are saying that we are promoting the peace now on the other hand we are the largest arms importer in the world so these two statements are kind of contradictory that on the one hand we are saying we believe in peace on the other hand we are importing largest arms and ammunition from the rest of the world so these two statements are contradictory now here we can understand it with the some geo strategic uh, things of the india okay so we are peaceful country india is a peaceful country but india is surrounded by not so peaceful neighbors not so peaceful neighbors we know on the western front india have pakistan and with pakistan from the very beginning since the partition we have a issue over um, the issue over the kashmir so there is a continuous tussle between both the countries over the issue of kashmir and over the period of time we came to know that there is a new emerging issue that is the cross border terrorism so these are the two biggest problems the, uh, uh, um, between india and pakistan that's why there is a continuous aggression we can see from the pakistani side and also the retaliation from the indian side that's why that area Uh, that area needs to be uh, indian forces needs to be equipped enough in that particular area that's why in order to fulfill the needs of the armed forces india need um, india need ammunition and indian um, defense capabilities or you can say the india's indigenous or the indian industries means you can say the production within the india is not adequate enough that's why we need to import when you need to import like it's a very simple question why when we need to import we need to import only when our domestic capabilities are not producing enough okay so the demands of all three forces is like for the 100 100 uh, um, tanks they want indian industries are producing only 50 so the remaining 50 will be imported by india so here we can understand that on the western front there is a continuous tussle over kashmir between india and pakistan there is a cross border terrorism also that's why indian um uh indian government is very keen to interest in uh, in this particular um, in, in in this particular region uh, to equip the armed forces so on the western front we have pakistan now on the eastern front we know that we have the expansionist china china and india do not have a issue like kashmir but definitely certainly there are some issues over the uh, over the um the boundary dispute is there between india and china you can see that uh, in the ladakh region we have some problems we are continuously seeing for last 3 4 years the continuous stand up between both the countries on the um, other side that is the uh, in the arunachal pradesh we also have some uh, expansionist policy of china so when a country have expansionist policy then definitely you must safeguard your own territory otherwise they will capture more and more of your territory and uh, and that will not be in the uh, you know uh, not be in the interest of the india so on the eastern front we have china on the western front we have pakistan and there is a continuous uh standoffs between the armies there is a hot pursuit also and we have also seen uh, the wars in the previous years since independence in 1947 india got independence after that in 1962 india have seen war with the china after that we have seen in 65 the war with the pakistan then in 1971 uh, there was a war with the uh, pakistan again over the issue of bangladesh when the bangladesh emerged 
and in the 1999 we had the kargil war with the pakistan so we can see that uh, on the eastern and western front indian defense um, defense forces must be equipped enough so that they can safeguard the territorial integrity of the india so here we are very much clear why india is the largest arms importer there are two reasons first we are peaceful but our neighbors are not so peaceful that's why we need to equip our armed forces adequately on the one hand now on the second uh, on the second in the second point we can see that why we need to import because our domestic industry is not producing enough to fulfill the demands of all three uh, all three uh, armed forces the, these are the all three uh, defense forces that is the army navy and the air force okay so these are the two reasons that's why india is the largest importer so india remains the largest arms importer in the world it spends on an average of 3.6 billion dollars 3.6 billion dollar is a huge amount of money which india spends spends on the import of the arms and ammunition from the rest of the world here which is more than combined defense sorry which is more than the combined defense import of both pakistan and china now here we can understand this is the fact that uh, uh, china also imports the arms and ammunition but china have uh, adequately uh, equipped their armed forces and their domestic industry is uh, at par with their requirement so they import uh, uh, very less as compared to the other countries uh, on the one hand china imports less but uh, pakistan is there which don't have very huge domestic capability that's why they import a lot so combinedly the total import of china and pakistan is still less than the uh, total import of india this is what this statement is saying it is about the import of pakistan and china not the um, not, not the overall defense production okay it is about import so india is the largest arms importer in the world now the third india's defense industry now we are talk, we are talking about the india's defense industry like defense industry means there are there are a structural there is a structure of the ministry ministry is there after under the ministry there are some many uh, uh, defense psus are there which are working under it which uh, work in the direction of the defense production they produce the tanks they produce the missiles and they produce so many other things uh, which are related to the arms and ammunition on the other hand we have the private player also the private industries also which are working in the uh, defense production industry okay so all these uh, industries are and the this whole structure is part of india's defense industry here we can see that we have eight defense psus eight defense psus psu means public service undertakings psus are nothing but the public service undertaking now what are psus psus are uh, the government companies or you can say a uh, a company which is uh, indulged in the production of goods and services and in which the government is the largest shareholder okay means there are 100 shares if there are 100 shares then more than 50% share are held by the government of india that is called the psu so there are eight defense psus means eight government companies which are indulged in the production activity of defense equipments 41 factories there are 41 ordnance factories we will discuss about it although there is a corporatization of the defense uh, corporatization of the ordnance factory which we will discuss in this same series uh, in the our upcoming lectures but here we can for 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 this uh, this point of uh, time you can understand there are 41 factories there uh, for the defense production 49 labs the laboratories the research and development is a very core part of the defense uh, uh, capabilities because if r and d or the research and development is very good then definitely that will pave the way for the better production and the understanding and having a better technical know how to produce the arms and ammunition at par with the other countries so there are 49 laboratories are there and they are coming under drdo drdo is nothing but the defense research and development organization we will discuss about it what is drdo in detail so drdo is a government agency and uh, which is which indulge in the uh, research and development in the field of defense so 49 defense uh, uh, defense laboratories are there now aim is to accomplish why we are doing all these three things why we are doing all these three things the aim is to accomplish self reliance in the defense production self reliance in the defense production now we are very much aware we are very much aware that our 
both the frontiers, the western frontier and the eastern frontier. We are surrounded by two not so friendly countries, the China and the Pakistan and our armed forces are continuously engaged with them. So we need to equip them. But we have a problem that our defense capabilities or our domestic defense capabilities are not, not at par with the requirement of the our defense forces. So if our, um, if our domestic industry is not capable enough, what we will do? We will import it and we know that we are the largest importer. Now this import is uh, largest importer of arms and ammunition in the world. India is largest importer. Now there is a problem with the import. Why? Because whenever you import things from rest of the world, you have to pay you have to pay money in terms of usually dollars or your forex. Okay, and you know that the defense, uh, if you are very much aware about the economics, you know that the defense expenditure of the government of India comes under the committed expenditure and comes under the revenue uh, revenue account of government of India. Now the revenue account of government of India usually in the deficit. And because of that, India always use the capital account money to finance the revenue deficit. So if import will be very high, then what will happen? The revenue account will go into deficit. Okay. When revenue account will go into deficit, that India will take out money from the capital account in order to, um, in order to save the revenue account. So the capital expenditure would be less. Uh, the, the, we will have less money available in the capital part. So capital part is like the for the infrastructure creation and all that. So when the revenue expenditure would be high, then ultimately the capital expenditure would be low. That is not a good sign. Okay, this is a part of economics. If you haven't read about the fiscal and monetary policy, no need to worry about it. I'm just saying that the import part or the value of import should be reduced. Value of import should be reduced. Our key concern here is that there is a huge 3.6 billion dollars of the import. So in order to reduce the import, what we will do? We will try to produce those things within India. Okay, it's very simple. If we want to reduce our imports, what we will do? We will try to equip our domestic industries so that they can produce more and more and try to fulfill the demands of our defense industries. Okay. So ultimately, these all industries and these all DRDO factories and the defense PSUs, they are trying to um, they are trying to produce more and more so that they can equip the defense forces. Now, what is the aim is to accomplish self-reliance in the defense production. We know that we are going on the path of the Atmanirbhar Bharat. So Atmanirbhar Bharat is nothing but the make in India. Okay. Now make in India and also make in India and make make for the world. So we want to enhance our domestic capabilities. Okay. So this is the thing. This is what. Uh, uh, we, we understood in, in, in this, this, these three um, lines. So let's move forward. We are very much aware about the policy and all these things. You must keep these things in your mind. Now we will understand like w w what happened in the post-independent India uh, till now, since 1947. So defense production and procurement policy we are talking about. We know that defense production is important and then the procurement policy because government of India will Purchase it, na? Purchase it means procurement means uh, purchasing. So either it will import. Importing is nothing but also purchasing. So it will purchase from the private industries and it will also import the items. So what is the policy? What is the principle government of India used to follow in order to uh, in order to purchase and the produce? So defense production and procurement policy. Now first thing, the defense production and procurement policy it came in the 1967. So first policy came into 1967. This you must keep in mind. Now, India inherited a majority of defense infrastructure and equipment from the British rule. We are very much aware because British came to India. They stayed for almost 250 years and they, uh, they also maintained their army. So they recruited local people and also at the officer rank they had their own uh, they, they had their own British people and the British officers and uh, most of the arms and ammunition they brought with them from the Britain because the production process was taking place there only. But there are so many uh, instances that the Britishers also invested money in the uh, defense production of uh, 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 within, within India, within the colonial India. So they made some of the factories at some, uh, some places. Uh, and those factories uh, after independence, they cannot take all the factories back with them. No, they can't. So those were inherited by the India. 
so after uh, at the time of 1947 we can say that the uh, all those uh, factories which were made by the britishers for the defense production were became part of the india were part of india means they were in situated in india only but who uh, lege nikko sath mein so now this point is that india inherited a majority of defense infrastructure and equipment from the british rule now during 1950s what happened in the 1950s india focused on its capability to indigenously produce equipment with limited technical know how now this is very important because in 1947 we heard we heard from the so many sources that ki ek sui bhi production nahi hota tha india mein so we are very much aware that at that time the at that time the production process was not you know very good in india in in other fields also and the defense industry were like it need a huge technical know how first thing it need a huge technical know what is technical know how technical know how is just uh, uh, if you are producing something there is definitely some underlying mechanism that mechanism you must know the technology which you are using that you must know those things are technical know how you must know about it so that technical know how was very limited indian defense production industry had very technical limited technical know how unko pata nahi tha kaise produce karna hai pehli cheez to now second thing was that uh, uh defense industry needs a huge seed capital huge seed capital means initially aapko bahut zyada paise ke kya padegi zarurat padegi agar aapko production karna hai okay to dono hi cheeze unke paas nahi thi first thing that they um, unke paas technical know how nahi tha on the second the second thing is that ki unke paas zyada paisa bhi nahi tha dono hi cheeze nahi hone ki wajah se defense industry bahut zyada aage badhi nahi but focus government ka kahan tha us pe dekho in 1950s 50s means in the uh, you know initial years of uh, independence india focused on its capability to indigenously produce equipment indigenously produce equipment means try to make in india try to make in india means try to make arms and ammunition on the indian soil so this is the first thing its capability to indigenously produce equipment with limited technical know how uh while the requirement for advanced equipment was left to be on imported definitely we are very much aware that technical know how zyada nahi pata hai paisa zyada hai nahi hai to humko jitna pata hai usse bana lete hain jitna ban raha tha usse arms armed forces jo thi ya jo defense forces jo thi un forces ki requirement fulfill nahi ho rahi thi because they were asking for some advanced weaponry that advanced weaponry was uh, you know imported from the other countries so we are very much clear in our initial phase in our initial years of independence what we did we we try to enhance our capabilities with the techni- limited technical know how on the other hand the advanced weaponry system was uh, imported from the other countries okay is uh, this was happening in 1950s now in 1956 the revised industrial policy resolution the revised industrial policy resolution reserved the arms and ammunition industry with the public sector this is very important statement this is very important statement that industrial policy resolution is altogether a different topic we will discuss it uh, uh, in the uh, topic of economics here just we need to know that in the industrial policy resolution of 1956 okay what government said that what we will intend to do with the industries in this industrial policies Uh, resolution government said that defense industry will be or you can say the arms and ammunition industry will remain with the public sector only bahut important hai isko dhyan se samjho iska matlab ye hai ki jo bhi industries kaam kar rahi hai pure bharat mein pure india mein un industries mein jo arms and ammunition ki industry matlab hathiyar banane wali jo industry hai wo industry sirf public sector ke paas rahegi public sector ka kya matlab hai PSU मतलब वो कंपनीज जो कि गवर्नमेंट कंपनीज हैं या जिसमें गवर्नमेंट की शेयर होल्डिंग 50 परसेंट से ज्यादा है वही कंपनीज क्या कर पाएगी हथियार बनाने का काम कर पाएगी प्राइवेट लोगों को हथियार बनाना अलाउड उन्होंने नहीं किया प्राइवेट लोगों को हथियार बनाना अलाउड नहीं किया प्राइवेट इंडस्ट्रीज अलाउड नहीं थी इसमें सिर्फ पब्लिक सेक्टर क्या करेगा आर्म्स एंड एम्यूनेशन बनाएगा ये नाइनटीन के रेजोल्यूशन में उन्होंने बोल दिया था ये दिख रहा है In 1956, the revised industrial policy resolution reserved the arms and ammunition industry with the public sector. Okay, this is very important. Now, in 1958, I am telling you one thing very specifically here that uh, there is a possibility that you are coming across some words which you never heard of. There is a possibility. Okay, we will discuss all the terms in a very 
you know detailed manner in our in in, in this series okay so here you must make sure that ki अगर कोई नया टर्म आता है तो आपको अभी ऐसा नहीं कि अरे ये नया टर्म आ गया कहाँ से आ गया इंडस्ट्री पॉलिसी रेजोल्यूशन कहाँ से आ गया ग्रेजुअली आप जैसे जैसे सब्जेक्ट में आगे बढ़ोगे आपकी चीज़ें सारी क्या होती रहेगी क्लियर होती रहेगी अब इन 1958 हम अभी देख रहे हैं कि इंडिया की 1947 से लेके अभी करंट तक क्या एक प्रोसीजर गवर्नमेंट ने फॉलो किया है हिस्ट्री कैसी रही है इंडिया की डिफेंस कैपेबिलिटीज की इनका डिटेल हम पूरा देखने वाले हैं आगे ठीक है In 1958, the ordnance factories. Now, what are the ordnance factories? वही factories जो कि Britishers बना के गए थे defence production के लिए भी बताया था. Defence Britishers यहाँ रहे, उन्होंने factories बनाई. उसमें से कई सारे factories थी जो ordnance factories थी. Ordnance factories क्या कर रही थी? Arms and ammunition बनाने का काम कर रही थी. तो 1958 में जो भी ordnance factories थी पुरानी, set up under British rule, became core group of industries that formed DRDO. मतलब उन ordnance factories जो थी उन्हीं की ग्रुपिंग हुई और उन्होंने अल्टीमेटली दे पेव द वे फॉर द यू नो द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ द डीआरडीओ डिफेंस रिसर्च डेवलपमेंट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन डोंट वरी डीआरडीओ को भी डिटेल में पढ़ने वाले ये एक सिर्फ एक फैक्ट है सो हियर वी अंडरस्टूड सो मेनी थिंग्स फर्स्ट इज दैट इंडिया इज अ पीसफुल कंट्री एंड इंडिया बिलीव इन दैट यू नो पीस इन द सस्टेनेबल पीस इन दिस सब कॉन्टिनेंट विद इंडिया पाकिस्तान बांग्लादेश नेपाल एंड म्यांमार श्रीलंका ऑल दीज कंट्रीज वी नीड अस्टेनेबल पीस इन द साउथ एशियन रीजन इन द सब कॉन्टिनेंट बट ऑन द अदर हैंड वी ऑल्सो इक्विप अवर डिफेंस फोर्सेज एडिकुएटली सो दैट दे कैन सेफ गार्ड द टेरिटोरियल इंटीग्रिटी ऑफ द कंट्री दैट्स अ वन थिंग इंडिया इज द लार्जेस्ट इम्पोर्टर इन द वर्ल्ड स्पेंड ऑन एन एवरेज दिस मच एंड दैट्स इट एंड दिस इज द डिफेंस इंडस्ट्री एट डिफेंस पी एस यूज आर देयर फैक्ट्रीज लैब्स आर देयर and uh, india inherited majority of defense infrastructure from the british then in 50s india started with limited technical now jitna pata tha usme humne start kar diya aur jo badi weaponry thi wo humne kya kar liya import kar liya because uh, forces ko chahiye to thi na 56 ke industrial policy resolution mein unhone ye bol diya ki bhaiya hathiyaron ka production sirf government companies karegi private companies ko allowed nahi aur ye ordnance factories jo thi unse ultimately drdo unhone banaya theek hai नेक्स्ट नाउ नाउ व्हाट इज हैपनिंग इंडिया इज वॉर विद पाकिस्तान नाउ इंडिया हैड वॉर विद चाइना इन 1962 एंड 1965 इंडिया हैड वॉर विद द पाकिस्तान नाउ दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इंडिया हैड वॉर विद द पाकिस्तान इन 1965 एट दैट टाइम द प्राइम मिनिस्टर ऑफ इंडिया वाज लाल बहादुर शास्त्री नाउ व्हाट वाज हैपनिंग हियर देयर इज अ लिटिल यू नो इंफॉर्मेशन व्हिच यू मस्ट need to know in order to understand why this happened what was the global political scenario at that time and uh, uh, what was happening around the world at that time because that ultimately uh, you know uh, impacted the india's foreign policy that also impacted the uh, the um, the global world order at that time and also the embargo which is imposed by usa just read the sign india's war with pakistan in 1965 and an embargo imposed by usa upon arms export to india promoted india to build the strong defense ties with erstwhile soviet union now this is very important you must understand that why this happened so uh, here uh, we will cover this in our uh, upcoming class okay so here do the revision we will do it in our next class